advertise. Yes. And of course, you know what has happened to advertising some of these uh, rumors, uh, federal government uh, agencies, what has happened over like, the years. I mean, do you think... Uh, first of all, first of, first, first of all, privatization works. When it doesn't work is because those that privatize do not want it to work. They make it fail on purpose. Take, let's go back in history, Richard Branson. President Obasanjo invited Richard Branson, and many times I was sitting in front with President Obasanjo in his house when he asked me to place a call to Richard Branson. Invited Richard Branson to buy Air Nigeria. Made a deal with him, gave him a slot at Muritala Mohammed, where you could fly domestic and international at the same time. Somebody got angry and forcefully removed Virgin Nigeria from MM1 to MM2. Violated an agreement. Richard Branson pulled out of Nigeria and Virgin Nigeria died. Till today, nobody has apologized to him. If you want to upset somebody, do you upset one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world, like Richard Branson? He then writes a book, he talks about Nigeria in very negative terms. But somebody signed that agreement. If we sign a bad agreement with a foreigner, whose job it is to make money? Why have we not punished the person who wrote the agreement or who signed the agreement on behalf of the government? Why are we punishing the businessman who benefited from the agreement that he signed to benefit his company? Then, Baba Lacking, you go to MM2, he signed an agreement. We don't want to honor the agreement. What is wrong in honor the agreement? If it's a bad agreement, in 10 years the agreement is over. But we take, uh, we take great pleasure in not honoring agreement we signed. So, in the two cases, they go after Richard Branson, they go after Baba Lacking, but the man that signs or drafts the agreement on behalf of the federal government is a nice guy, he's a clean guy. Does that make sense? So, now let's look at the aviation sector. The aviation industry right now generates over 100 billion naira in cash. 100, listen carefully, 100 billion naira. Cadbury generates 28 billion in the stock exchange. Guinness, Nigeria Limited, generates 118 billion in the stock exchange. Nestle, 130 billion in the stock exchange. Nigerian Breweries, 293 billion in the stock exchange. GT Bank, 301 billion. But the Nigerian aviation industry generates over 100 billion naira in cash. Think what I've just said. If you want to buy a house abroad, they give you nine times what you earn. So if you earn $10, they'll give you $100. If you want to buy a car, they give you multiples of what you earn. You put this in the bank. This sector can borrow all the money to fund the expansion of every airport in the country, can run the aviation industry successfully and profitably. There will be no problem in the aviation sector now, tomorrow, yesterday, and forever. Yet, with this kind of money, you have no UPS in Lagos, toilets don't work, escalators don't work, elevators don't work, generators break down. Every day there is one problem after the other. So how can you, as a private businessman, explain this? Does this make sense? I, 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 I am dumbfounded. Over and over. Well, what, what, I mean, what the to make it well, I am going to work on a bill and a motion to privatize, not commercialize. They need to be privatized and they need to be sold to people with capacity who can run the aviation sector. It is a life and death issue. It's not a question whether you like it or you don't like it. It's a life and death issue. Take the, air, take the runway at Namdi Azikiwe Airport. It expired 15 years ago. So for 15 years, what were the ministers doing? Why not build the second one way? If I were the president, I would overhaul the entire sector. But more than that, I would get the Nigerian Corps of Engineers today to start building the second one way. They will start building it right now. I wouldn't give out a contract. I'll get the Nigerian army to start building the second runway right now as we speak. In less than two years, that runway will be ready. What is a runway? During the Civil War, did we not have a runway at Willi Airstrip? Did you not build runways in Africa? When you said there's no rail in Nigeria, did you not have a rail 
rail line in Nigeria 150 years ago. So what is the difficulty in having rail lines in Nigeria? You have Ajakuta steel that produces the steel that can have run with 10,000 kilometers a year. So I think, you know, I wish I was not in government. I tell you the truth. Because when you're in government, you know too much. And when you know too much, you get very, very angry. When I was in the private sector, I didn't have the information I have today. I didn't have access to budgets of ministries and departments. Now, now that I have access to, to budgets of ministry and departments, there is no reason for Nigeria to be broke. Really. We are broke on purpose. We want to be broke. We want to be poor. We want to be miserable. There is no reason for Nigeria to be broke. Because I see these numbers. 100 billion Naira in cash. I'm not talking of allocation from the federal government. I'm talking of cash in the bank. One of these prostitutes has 16 billion in cash already. So explain to me why we have a problem. Maybe you can explain, but I certainly, I, I, I am dumbfounded. It doesn't make any sense. And as we crisscross all the agencies and all the ministries in Nigeria, more, there'll be more revelations. But there is no reason on planet Earth that aviation should need any money from the government. They don't need a penny from the government. They can fund all their operations, service all their debts, and be profitable, pay taxes, and be in the stock exchange tomorrow morning, if this was run privately. Okay, sir. I would like to ask this last question. With some of, you said earlier that as the budget defense from 1940, definitely uh, more revelation is come up. Earlier on, like two weeks ago, some of the funds are saying they may not even have proved the 2017 budget for some agencies who perform the low expectation. What do you mean by what do you mean by below? What does that mean? Probably like 30% performance or 25%. It depends what you mean by what do you mean by 30% performance from the IGRs, from federal government? Overall, you have to be more specific. I mean, I'm a very specific kind of guy, so you have to. The question is not specific enough. You have to tell me how. For instance, for instance, they raised 100 billion. Airlines are being taxed to debt. You are taxing all the airlines are broke. All your domestic carriers are broke. I don't anybody tell you anything. All of them have no cash. No domestic carrier today is rich. They are barely surviving. That becomes a safety problem in the future. So, these agencies are now becoming tax collectors. They want to increase the IGR and then spend it all on personnel and overhead. Kill the, kill the airlines. Abroad, airlines spend over than 5 10% of their gross income as tax. Here they pay 30, 30, 35 percent. So you're over taxing the airline and then the money you collect is being used for salaries, travel expenses, training and more training and more visits and more training and more overhead and where's the service? If you collect a hundred billion, will you say your toilets don't flush? If you collect a hundred billion, there's no UPS at Muratala Mohammed one. No UPS. If, if they take light, you wait because all the, con all the computers have to be rebooted. What, how much is a UPS? What does it, I asked the question, what does it cost to run Muritala Mohammed 1? What is the cost? I don't have that information. I asked the last time. I said, give me the cost. What does it cost to run Namdi Azikiwe Airport? What does it cost to... Potako doesn't have an airport. There's a shed there. So they, they can't have any cost. Does Potako have an airport? There's a shed. Most airports in Nigeria operate six hours a day. There are no flights. So what is the overhead cost? So are we becoming an agency of unproductivity or we're an agency to create wealth and services for Nigeria? If all we do is employ people, it's nice to employ people, but what services do we provide? So we are broke on purpose. Yeah, I, I, I am dumbfounded from the private sector. This is this is unacceptable and I cannot be a part of it. You just want to attach to these kids and they want you to be their father. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh my God. You wanted to come on, you wanted to hear it, and you did. <laughs> but I want you to go back with a clear mind, all right? All right? Okay. Now Rebecca's in pain, you're in pain, you ought to go and console each other. Thank you. Come on. All right. Put your little off my face. Boy, flush that boy in a heartbeat. Brad caught Amanda doing this. She sent naked pictures of herself to several men, <laughs> including one of his best friends. He's here today with his mother. I got the picture. 
Oh. They're praying they will hear you are the father. I don't want to be the father. Yes, I do. The results are in. Is Brad the father? Brad? Oh, Brad, you are not that baby daddy. Is Corey's brother the real father of his baby? Corey, Mike, don't go away. The dramatic results are coming up. It's time for Dial Up the Drum. There are a lot of guests and stories on today's show. Today's How? It's about one in particular period. In the case of one and a half year old Jade and Mike, Corey, who do you think bothered Sheila's baby? Corey or his brother Mike? Dial Up the Drama and let us know. Please call 1-866-99-MARK. Give me your opinion. You'll also receive several valuable offers when you call. Does America agree with you? Call 1-866-99-MARK right now. Mark was brought to you in part by... I was at a job I didn't like, so I called Everest. They showed me around the school, and bam, I was there, getting hands-on training. Career placement helped me before graduation. Now I love my job. I changed my whole life with just one phone call. One phone call can change your life, too. Start training for a new career. Call Everest now at 1-800-875-9981. Everest for life. My name is Jane, and I've got osteoporosis, but I'm an on-the-go woman. Yes, I've been know. active all my life. Yes. That's why I'm excited about Reclass. It's the once-a-year IV osteoporosis.